Um, my name is Luke Odom. I'm the director of IT operations at DreamHost. Uh, a little bit about me, uh, I'm a Georgia boy. I grew up about an hour inland of Savannah on a small farm. Uh, my, I got my BBA and MBA from Georgia Southern, go Eagles. Um, and I've been with DreamHost for about 13 years and I currently live in Macon, Georgia with my beautiful wife and my four little rascals. Um, I don't come to word camps, which may be shocking since I'm at a word camp. Um, but what I do do is I go and visit our infrastructure for DreamHost, and I happen to be in uh, Northern Virginia at the same time as WordCamp US, uh, where DreamHost had a table. So I asked, I was like, I don't tend to see that many DreamHost people since I work in the infrastructure side. It's like, can I just come hang out at the table and just hang out with y'all and they're like yeah we, we tend to get a lot of technical questions and you can you'd be good to answer those um so what i found out in working at the WordCamp us table was a lot of people had questions about a lot of the features that the different hosting plans have um, we had a lot of questions and i wish i had taken pictures because i was not intending to do this at the time but a lot of the different hosting providers that had tables at WordCamp us had these little these backdrops behind their tables that were covered in acronyms. And I knew what all the acronyms meant, but I realized as people came by the table and started asking questions, a lot of people did not know what the acronyms meant. Um, so my goal, my goal in this presentation is for you, whenever you're going and looking for hosting for your company, for your nonprofit, um, for wherever you're hosting your WordPress sites, when you see these lists of like things that come with your different plans, or the type of hosting it is, or whatever it is, you know what it is and you're comfortable in, is this something that my site needs or not? Um, Brett is going to be helping us on our journey here. Um, this is Brett. Brett likes to play the ukulele. Um, he likes to play at a local coffee shops. He doesn't actually get invited to these local coffee shops. He just shows up and starts playing his ukulele. Um, but you can see the way he's looking. He has dreams, he's gonna go big. He's just, this is where he's starting out. Um, and some of the people that like to come listen to her are like, dude, you really need to have a website. Like, you need to be out there. You need to show people what you enjoy, what you love. Share this with other people. Brett knows nothing about websites. Um, he's also not going to get any traffic to these websites. <laughs> I mean, a little bit, but not a lot. So, low traffic, doesn't really know that much about web hosting. Um, shared hosting is really what Brett needs. So shared hosting, it's usually the bottom tier of any hosting provider you see, um, two to $10 a month. Uh, this is the kind of the graphic I'll use for a server um, in all of my presentation. There's a lot of WordPress sites on this one server. It's called shared hosting because you're sharing these resources with a ton of other sites, which if you're Brett, if you're not getting that much traffic, if that's, not, if that's all you need, it's perfect because you're not having to pay that much and your site loads. It comes up whenever you're there. Um, there are significant resource restrictions. If you tried to put a high traffic site on shared, it's not going to work well, if at all. Um, but if it's low traffic, if it doesn't need much, there's not many plugins, there's not that much content, this is perfect. Um, what are some of the features that are usually advertised with shared hosting? Uh, caching. So the analogy I'm going to use for caching um, through this presentation is like baking a cake. So you have all your ingredients, you get your eggs, your flour, whatever you're gonna put into the cake, you put it together and mix it, you bake it, you put on the decorations. Think of like from the Great British Baking Show, the big elaborate ones they make. They go through all this time, all these resources, they make this beautiful cake. One person comes in to see it, imagine they throw it in the trash, they start on the next one. All the person only wants to see the cake. Um, what caching is, is like, okay, you bake the cake once, you take a picture. Caching is, so someone comes up for a plugin, they come to the site, the first time the site's loaded, you've made your content, it pulls in the plugins, it pulls in the themes, it gets the content out of the database, it figures out what it's going to look like, and it saves that. So there's a bunch of different caching plugins, but that's your basic, the basic version of caching, the easiest version of caching, the WordPress plugin, and it means your server doesn't have to go through all of the resource intensiveness of building the site every time. Uh, but with shared, you're usually going to be using your own plugin cache in within WordPress. Here's some of those acronyms. Um, you'll either see it as SFTP or FTP. No one really uses FTP anymore, but it got kind of in common nomenclature, so you'll still see it listed sometimes. 
SFTP stands for Secure Shell Protocol File Transfer Protocol. You can see why we use acronyms in IT. We even use the same word, protocol, twice. Oh. But if you ever see that advertised, what they're talking about is you have access to the files, the underlying file system that your site served on. Um, this is FileZilla, but there are many different applications to do it. Um, on the right side, these are all the web, all the files for your website. Left side, that's just your local files on your computer. This just allows you, if you need to move, if you have backups you want to save locally, if you want to move sites or you have a backup on your computer you want to save to the site, it's basically just moving files back and forth. There's not much else you can do with SFTP, but with shared hosting, you usually get access to at least being able to access your files. Um, Brett formed a band. Um, all the local ukulele players heard Brett playing, so they formed a band. The band is going to get a little more traffic. Um, they're a little more popular. There's more band members. They have family members that are probably going to go to their band. Um, they also want to start selling merchandise in their site, so they're going to be using something a little more... Uh, resource intensive, WooCommerce, or something of that nature. Uh, you also have scheduling. Where, where is this band going to play their ukuleles? So more plugins, more complex site, uses more resources. Um, and sometimes they'll get small traffic surges if they're playing in a certain place. And the people there are like, hey, I like Brett's band. Let me look it up and see what's up. Um, something more appropriate for getting a little bit more traffic. And if you were here for the last uh, speaker, um, he actually mentioned he uses VPS hosting. He specifically uses the one with AWS. There are many different uh, VPS providers, but the set concept's the same of you have a box of resources on the server. These are yours. However many cores, however much RAM, that's yours alone. No one can mess with it. Um, you also notice there's some white space around here um, in our conceptual server. And what I did there is like it's burstable. So if you have these big traffic surges like Brett's band has, um, the CPU or the RAM, a lot of VPS providers will let you use a little bit extra just when you're having these surges. Um, so you get reserved hardware resources, you get burstable resources. It's a little bit more expensive um, because you're getting, instead of having all those sites, you are getting a dedicated chunk. Um, you can do multiple WordPress sites on a single VPS if you want. Um, most people, or at least the ones I've seen, will usually try to do separate ones just to keep the stuff uh, differentiated between their clients or so that you can track issues between individual sites. Um, with a VPS, or specifically with selling merchandise or any kind of, you know, that you are always going to want to encrypt your traffic. So website traffic normally is just plain text going through the internet. Any person in the middle can capture it and look at it. If you're Brett's homepage of him playing ukulele, you don't really care. If you're share, share, uh, selling a hat with a ukulele on it, you care because you're transferring customer information, credit card information. Uh, the way that traffic is encrypted is usually advertised as SSL. Um, SSL actually hasn't been used in years, but that's what we all called it, so we keep advertising it that way. Um, that's secure socket layer. What's actually used modernly is TLS, transport layer security. Depending on the hosting provider, they'll list one of those two. It means the same thing. It's encrypting traffic between you and your customers. Um, there's a lot of free options. There are paid options too. They give you basically no benefit other than it just sell them instead of giving them away for free. Um, Let's Encrypt is the one that I recommend. I actually put the SSL certificate of atlanta.wordcamp.org on there. It happened to be a Let's Encrypt certificate. So any traffic between when you were visiting the Atlanta WordPress or WordCamp site, your computer is using that certificate right there to encrypt the traffic. Um, Let's Encrypt is very popular. It's a nonprofit. It's open source. It's created by Mozilla. Um, and a few other vendors. I sh if your hosting provider does not give you free certificates, strongly recommend using Let's Encrypt. Another thing to know about encryption certificates is they expire. Let's Encrypt is 90 days, certain other ones are a year. It's something you need to make sure you keep renewed. It's something you need to watch out if, it's, if having your traffic encrypted is important. Caching again. Um, we talked about the plugin caching before. 
the, basically the further up the line you do the caching, the faster it's gonna be. Uh, the way I did this presentation is I just Googled each type of hosting and went to the top five sites uh, on Google and then pulled off the technical features because they all call things different things. Um, reverse caching proxy, caching proxy, varnish proxy, varnish caching. They all call it a lot of different things. Uh, but what the type of cache, what that type of caching is, is it's doing the same, imagine the picture of the cake that we had in the bakery. They're now posting it on the door. You don't have to enter the bakery at all. So the web, the web software that's doing the serving of the site is serving it before it ever hits WordPress. WordPress never even gets loaded with a, word, with a proxy, reverse proxy, varnish, whatever you want to call it, which makes your site faster because it never even has to start loading the index file for WordPress. It's already there, it knows what it looks like. Um, one thing to keep in mind though is since WordPress is never touched, if you're editing WordPress, the cache doesn't always refresh immediately. There's usually a timer or a button on the panel of your web host that will actually update that uh, proxy for you so that your changes you make may not immediately be live. So it's something to keep in mind um, when using a proxy like that. And the next thing is before on the lower tiers you just have access to files, SSH or Secure Shell Protocol gets you a command line environment which gives you access to actually do things on the server. Uh, so what kind of things can you do? WPCLI, if you're dealing with WordPress, is awesome. That's what the screenshot is here. This is just searching for and installing a plugin. Um, if you just have one site, it, it's probably not as useful. If you're updating hundreds of sites, you can write a script that just does it all. Um, if you break your site and you can't get logged in, WPCLI is a great way to troubleshoot it. Um, this also gets you access to logs. You can do resource monitoring to see exactly what resources are, is my VPS using. Um, if you have two cores you, and you seem to be like, from the dashboard your CPU constrained all the time, you can look like, what, why? What is happening on my server this is happening? So this gets you access onto the server to actually do things with your site. Um, it is usually advertised as SSH, shell access, CLI access, There's some of the various things that it's marketed under. All right, Brett's van went viral. So they learned, Brett learned that if you do things with cats, it makes you way more popular on the internet. So Brett did a bunch of videos with his ukulele with cats. We have a screenshot of one of them here. Um, it takes a lot of time to record fresh content with cats. Cats don't always do, they never do what you want them to do. I have four of them, they're crazy. Um, but Brett no longer has time to actually do the management of his site. He doesn't have time to update the plugins. He doesn't have time to deal with the theme. Um, he's only got time to record cat videos. Uh, a very, very common thing, which I'm sure all of you have heard of this one, is managed WordPress hosting. This is where a hosting provider, there are many, there are many good ones. Uh, they do all of the back-end kind of maintenance for you. They'll handle your PHP version, they'll update the core, they'll update your plugins. They'll do basically everything but the content stuff for you. Uh, this is more expensive than VPS hosting usually because they're doing all of that management type stuff for you. They'll deal with, you don't have to worry about the caching. They'll deal with the caching, they'll deal with the performance. Um, if you have a agency or a company that's big enough, you'll usually use something like this because you know, or like, you don't have time to do that stuff. You have your business to run or your van to do cat videos with. Um, this is one of the ones that actually was called basically the same thing on every site I looked at, but it's a web application firewall. Um, and that's a wall of fire, not a firewall. Don't get the two confused. Um, what a web application firewall, I, like, I call it here like a bouncer or a security guard. So plugins, WordPress core, um, there are many vulnerabilities, cross scripting things. There's many ways to attack and break into websites. Um, there are malicious people trying to get access for your resources to try to steal personal uh, customer data. Um, what a web application firewall does is it's looking at the traffic and normal legitimate traffic looks a certain way. People trying to break into your site or try to search for vulnerabilities looks a different way. So what a web application firewall is, it looks at every request, and if your request looks a little fishy, it's like, I'm actually not even gonna let you try. I'm gonna kick you right out. Um, so it's looking for patterns and attacks before they actually get to the site. 
Oh yeah, and then and why, why would someone attack my site at all? Um, they're not after your ukuleles, I promise you that. Um, they're usually after one of two things. They're either after sensitive information they can steal and then they have your customer's passwords or their credit card information or their personal information, or they're just after the resources. If you have a big site, it means you're probably on a big VPS or something like that, which means you have lots of resources to mine crypto and send out spam and all the things they don't want to have to pay to do. They'd rather you pay for them to do it. Um, Web Application Firewall will help to protect those people from getting in and causing you a hassle. All right, Brett's band has gone on tour. Um, so lots more traffic. They're more well-known. So this is, uh, they're adding music streaming to the site so you can actually listen to their, play their ukuleles. Um, really big, Brett's doing awesome. So this is dedicated hosting. Dedicated hosting, you get the server all to yourself, just you. Doesn't have to be one site, um, but having a server all to yourself can handle a lot of traffic. Um, it can take a serious beating. Um, some of the, think of the biggest, highest traffic websites outside of like Google and all. I have dedicated could probably handle the traffic if it's configured well. One thing having a dedicated get is root access. Root, it's part of a tree. I tried to research why we call it root and I couldn't find anything, so it's just part of a tree. Um, but with root access, you can do anything. You can control how the caching on your site works, the packages that are installed, what web server you're using, Apache or Nginx or Lighty. You have complete and full control. Uh, if you get to this level, you generally also have a sysadmin or someone like that in your employee that's managing all these details. But with a dedicated server, you have complete control of the server to configure it in any way that you want. Also, with these very large sites, you also tend to get DDoSs. So DDoS mitigation is one of the advertised features you'll see a lot of hosts. What is a DDoS? Uh, distributed, so it's traffic coming from all over the world, and denial of service. So the reason they're doing it is to try to prevent regular visits to your site from working. So I did the kind of a picture of a store here. If this was a low traffic store and there's only like three people wanting to try to get to it, the way you stop the three people from getting to that store is you just slam it with a thousand people. They're never getting in the front door. Um, the most, from my experience, the most common things we see DDoSs against are political sites um, or large traffic sites that are doing it specifically to break up the accessing the site. What DDoS mitigation does is at the edge, so as the traffic enters the data center where your site's being hosted, um, they have very, very complex devices analyzing the traffic, looking for patterns, figuring out what is DDoS traffic and what is legitimate. Um, it's far more expensive and complex devices than a web application firewall because this isn't malicious traffic, or it doesn't look like malicious traffic. It looks like legit traffic. There's just a lot of it. So much so you can't, host, you can't serve your site. So if you see that advertised, DDoS mitigation is one of the features being offered. That's what it is. It keeps those from happening. They're not very common, but when they do happen, they are very hard to mitigate. Um, another thing, and you'll see this on almost every plan, the, you'll kind of see HDD, SSD, and NVMe as three words that are used when talking about storage. Um, HDD and SSD are types of storage devices. Uh, and I'll get to that crazy chart in a second. Uh, hard drives, they use spinning platters, magnetic heads. Compared to most modern things, they're relatively slow, but you can store a lot of data. SSDs are like flash drives. Your flash drives are effectively SSDs. Solid state storage, extremely fast access. NVMe is a protocol of how storage talks to a processor. A completely different thing. Non-volatile memory express, if you really need to know the acronym. Um, but it is a new protocol that allows flash storage to talk to CPUs extremely quickly. So I did three example metrics. There's so many different metrics you could use for, for storage. But read speed, which is how quickly you can read data. Latency, how rapidly you can access a certain piece of data. And random IOPS, which is how many operations, input or output operations you could do per second. Um, I won't go through all of it, but you can see between a hard drive on the left 
with like 170 IOPS and NVMe 1.7 million IOPS. Um, if you see these advertised, and oftentimes you will, it's like lightning speed NVMe storage or super fast SSD storage, that's what it's talking about. Um, and again, an NVMe is still an SSD. So if you see it's advertised as SSD storage, it could be NVMe. SATA is another protocol, SAS is another protocol. There's so many different buzzwords. The ones you tend to see on the marketing stuff, or the ones that I saw when looking for this, were HDD, SSD, and NVMe. And those are kind of the three, the difference in those three. All right, Brett Spann goes international. Sold out arenas worldwide. He is doing amazing. Um, now his traffic is coming from all over the world. So it's not just local traffic. Um, he has interactive crowd, uh, crowd elements. So he'll be like, okay, everybody pull out your phone. Do, go to my site and click on this. Let's choose what song to do next. Uh, has rapid scalability. You can go from very little traffic to now, I'm in a sold out arena and everyone's accessing the site. Multiple languages, dedicated social media team. This site is very resource intensive, being accessed by a ton of people all over the world. It's dynamic. This site is huge. So cloud hosting you will often see listed. So there was a joke in IT when cloud hosting started getting popular. That there is no cloud. It's just someone else's computer, which is true in the way that a lot of people were talking about cloud hosting. Because a lot of people are like, well, I'm just going to take my VPS and I'm going to spin it up in the cloud and it's going to be better. And I was like, no, you're just spinning it up on someone else's computer instead of this one. Um, what cloud actually is, which is different than these other hosting products, it is an architecture. It is a way, it's a framework of how you structure the site that allows it to scale rapidly. Um, so you're not constrained by the VPS, you're not constrained by a DETI. No matter how much traffic you're getting, it will scale out to handle that. Uh, the way you do that is you de-aggregate it and you do something like this. This is the Amazon AWS WordPress Cloud Reference Architecture. It's easy. So we're going to go over all these parts. Actually, no. Um, <laughs> clouds are complex. They, are, they, they have a lot of parts, a lot of pieces. They are for the biggest, highest traffic sites. The reason I bring them up here is a lot of hosting providers will create a cloud architecture that they then host your stuff on. So they're doing these pieces, you don't have to worry about it. Um, another thing to, uh, to say about cloud is you'll often hear cloud and your immediate thought is Google GCP or Amazon AWS or one of the public clouds that anyone can access. Uh, there are also private clouds, which are companies doing the very same thing. They're doing these cloud architectures, they're doing things in the cloud, but they're on their servers because cloud isn't about whose server it's on. It's not about your server or their server. It's about how it's structured so that no matter what happens with your site, it stays up and it grows with you without having to worry about, well, what's my RAM usage today? Or am I having a concert tomorrow? It scales and usually the pricing's based on, you, on the usage. So you're small, it's not gonna charge that much. It'll scale up, but you're gonna be paying for the scale up. Caching again. It's always caching. Um, CDN, which is the caching, is a content delivery network. Uh, there's Cloudflare, there's a bunch of other ones. What a CDN in is caching, and going back to our bakery example, you get the picture of that cake you baked and you mail it to places worldwide. So if someone wants to see a picture of the cake, they can go somewhere local. So the caching of the static parts of your site, the parts that aren't dynamic, on a CDN, sometimes the entire site, if your site's static, will go out to the whatever CDN provider you're using, all of their worldwide locations. So if someone in Indonesia or China or Germany, wherever they're at, they try to load their site, they're loading it from a local data center, not where you may be hosting it in Northern Virginia. So it's caching, but on a wide global scale, um, that's what a CDN is. I also saw when doing my research, High frequency CPUs was advertised a lot. So CPU is the central processing unit. It's the brain in the computer. It's the thing when you're loading the site, it's like, okay, let me, let me get the plugins. Let me load the things. Let me get this all together into one PHP file that works. Um, which processor, and there are thousands of models of processor, which one is running your site matters? Sometimes. If you have a really big, dynamic, lots of plugins, crazy traffic site, 
the processor can make a huge difference on if it takes five seconds or one second to load your site. Unless you have a very large, dynamic, uh, high traffic site, it's not gonna make a difference because you're using caching. You're not loading that much. Um, Advertise it for it, they will sometimes advertise it as the AMD F series or Intel Gold Platinum series processors. These are all the high frequency processors. So if you have, if you're in the tier where you need a global CDN, you need a big cloud infrastructure, the processor's going to matter. The tier that you're running on GCP or AWS or the gear that you're buying is gonna matter only when you're at that scale. The scale that most businesses are at, you could take the cheapest processor and the most expensive, the load time is not gonna vary that. Another thing, and this one had so many names, but staging, Git, version control, it's basically being able to create a version of your site that only you see, that you get ready, and you can do plug-in updates, you can change the version of PHP, you can completely redesign the site where only you see it, and then you hit a button and it becomes live. Um, this is not a default feature of WordPress, which is why there's so many different ways of doing it. Um, Git is a technology, is, created by Linus Tarvald. That's a technology that's used in the back end. Version control is kind of what it's called. Staging is the marketing name, but all of those different things just mean being able to mess with your own site, break your own site, play with your own site without making it live for other people to see. All right, that's it. Um, that's my X Twitter, whatever they call it now. Um, email, thanks for coming. Um, questions? When it comes to the web server between Apache, Nginx, and Lightspeed, can you talk about a little bit which is best for WordPress yes. specifically for so, a normal WordPress website versus an e-commerce yes. All right, so the most common you'll see is Apache. The reason that Apache tends to be the most common is WordPress utilizes what's called an HT access file. Um, to do some kind of, some URL manipulation and stuff, um, and it's expecting that to be there. Uh, we have found in testing, and a lot of other providers as well, have started moving to like Nginx. Th those are the two most common ones you'll see are Apache and Nginx. Um, Nginx is, tends to be easier to configure. It's also more geared towards high performance. Um, but yeah, it depends on it depends on if you're willing to deal with not having an HT access. At the very start, um, you mentioned that nobody uses FTP anymore. And that piqued my curiosity because I used to um, in, in helping on a site, not a WordPress site, it was a straight site. Uh, uh, I had a copy on my local and I make the updates and I only upload through FTP, what was updated? I didn't have to do mm -hmm. upload everything all the time. Why, and that's done through FTP, why is FTP not used anymore and how do people do that? So, yeah, FTP, um, the reason it's no longer used is it is a non secure protocol. It sends your username and password in plain text, where any, any middle person between you and your server could capture it and they have your username and password. Uh, so that's why it's not being used anymore. The SFTP, the one with the absurd acronym, is an entirely different protocol, despite having a similar name, that uses secure shell to make an encrypted connection. So it looks the same. So, so it's almost like logging into a company's VPN to do your Yes, exactly. So... This is FileZilla, which you can use with FTP. It will look exactly the same. You won't realize in the back end that you're using SFTP, because I'm using SFTP here. Um, the protocol and the way it's doing it is completely different in the back end, but from what it looks like to you using CyberDuck or FileZilla, it will look exactly the same. And that's why, and what you were saying is why a lot of companies will be like FTP access. What they actually mean is SFTP. Um, but because we've, for 20 years been calling it FTP. When the protocol changed, we just kept calling it FTP. Uh, even though for the people on the back end, I'm like, yeah, that's not right. 
Is just a port number, right? No, it's a completely different protocol. The, they do have different port, it's 21 versus 22, um, but the protocol itself is completely different. It's not, it's not just taking an FTP connection and adding encryption, it's a different protocol from the ground up, but with the same function. Brett? No, he says no. Yep. Yeah, shared and and especially I would recommend just start with shared. Um, you will with the knowledge that you will probably outgrow it. You need to keep an eye on the resources you're using. But if you have a small low traffic and you're just like I'm using this to learn or I'm using this to play, shared's perfect. That's, that's the reason it exists. There's a lot of companies in the space. And you tips on evaluating, like for managed care, or your managed hosting, or and um, tips when you look at your, at the companies out there? So obviously I'm a little bit biased as I've been with DreamHost for 13 years. I think we're great. Infrastructure's rock solid. <laughs> um, so one thing I would say is look at the features. Like what, what do you need? Like what, when looking at your scenario, how are you going to manage? Do you need, like the last guy that was here was talking about, he has the, online web interface where you can click and update one plugin on all the sites. Is that something that's important to you? Um, is staging something that's important to you? Uh, is the SSH access? Because like I said, I went to top five hits of all of these and the feature sets offered are drastically different. Um, another thing I would say is check reviews. Um, you're gonna have different, different times with different companies. Some are doing a great job, some are struggling. Um, oftentimes you can look online and figure out who's doing well and who's not. But yeah, um, obviously, I, I think DreamHost is good. I've been there for a while. There are, but there are a lot of other good companies out there. Um, there's a lot of people doing things differently than us, then they're doing great as well. So I, I'd say do your research, uh, know what you're looking for, know what's out there. Yes, it's over, sorry, that's it, we are gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I was curious, like, say you had a, a fairly large landscaping company, like, what kind of... So large landscaping. So for one thing, large landscaping, you're a landscaper. You're not going to be landscaping in Norway. Um, so you're not going to be looking for any of the like global CDNs or any of those kind of caching things that make global traffic look good. Um, so VPS is probably a good one because you're going to get enough traffic that shared is probably going to be a little less for you. Um, it's a fairly static site because I imagine you're going to be doing like these are this is what I offer for landscaping. This is this is my pricing structure. This is some example pictures. Um, one thing to note is if you're using a lot of example pictures, it's going to load that in RAM. You're probably not going to want the bottom in VPS. Um, the more picture heavy a site is, the more memory it's going to use. So probably something of a mid-tier VPS um, is where I would start and then get it set up there and you can monitor resources. The nice thing about VPS is that you can live, if you put it on, let's say, a two gig VPS and you look at your historical usage and you're like, man, I'm only ever hitting 500 or 70 megs, you can tear it down without having to migrate it or anything. So as a start, I would start to like, yeah, somewhere mid-tier VPS. Good. Can you explain about the when I was trying to get in the back, uh, how does it affect the VPS? Uh, uh, All right. Uh, so the question is, when you're getting attacked, what are the differences in shared VPS and uh, the others? So one big difference is if you're on shared, you have very limited resources. That includes being attacked. So an attack is going to Um, yeah, so usually if a shared, well, that site, the, the way shared hosting is going to work is you're going to have a certain limit on the resources you're going to hit. You're not going to have access to the entire server. It's not like every site can access all the resources. So if one gets attacked, it's going to, it's not going to take a very big attack to bring it down because you're going to hit those resource limitations, but the other sites hosted on shared are still going to be fine. Um, somewhat. Uh, it won't make them unusable, but it can slow them down, yeah.
All right, well, the sign's down. Let's go home. <laughs>